let's go to Galatians 5. And, and before we start, let's just pray real quick. Father God, we just thank you for your word. Um, God, we just thank you, Father, for your, your presence. We thank you that you've given us um, your son first so that we can have righteousness, right standing with you, peace with you, a relationship with you, and access to you, Father. Um, and then we thank you that you also gave, gave us the gift of your Holy Spirit. So we thank you that we're never alone. Thank you that you live within us, that you never leave us or forsake us, that you are shepherding us, discipling us, fathering us, mentoring us, and teaching us all things by your Spirit. We thank you for your word also. As we read your word and talk about your word tonight, um, I ask you, Father God, to give fill us with understanding and knowledge and wisdom and revelation by your spirit. Help us to grow in the knowledge of the new covenant, of the gospel, of your glorious kingdom, of who we are in Christ and of what you've called us to do and empowered us to do by your spirit. We just pray for understanding. And I pray for everybody watching tonight or watching later. Once I post this video, God, I pray that you would help them understand your word. Give them a greater hunger and thirst for righteousness like never before. And give them a greater understanding of your will, of your ways like never before. And I just pray that you teach them and strengthen them. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's start in verse number 16 where it starts to talk about the spirit. Okay? All right. So it says, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. So we see right here that being led by the spirit, walking in the spirit that God has given us will lead us to live a life that is not fleshly, that is not carnal, that is not sinful. We see that, right? It's pretty obvious. So that's verse 16. Verse 17 says, For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. So here we see that what the flesh wants, the spirit doesn't want. Now, this is Paul talking to believers. So this isn't pre-conversion. This isn't before the resurrection. This isn't none of that. This is a teaching for you and I here today because we have the spirit and we also have flesh. So this is definitely relevant to us. Okay, so let's keep reading. Um, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. So they're opposed, they're enemies, they're contrary to keep you from doing the things you want to do. So the flesh will not lead you to do Holy Spirit things, and the Holy Spirit will not lead you to do flesh things, okay? So if while I'm talking, um, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, go ahead, feel free to type, and um, and I'll try my best to, to continue um, inter interacting with you guys as we do this Facebook Live, um, just in case anybody has comments or questions and things like that. Um, and I know it's kind of limited because you guys can't talk and I can't see y'all, but you could go ahead and comment on here. Um, a better way to do this is, is through our Tuesday and Thursday night online Bible studies that we do live um, through Zoom. So if you're interested in that, um, I'm going to put the link for that um, below in just a minute. Uh, so you can sign up for those. If you want to be more interactive and be able to talk and be seen and stuff like that, you can join our Bible studies. But for now, let's just try our best with, with Facebook, okay? So I left off at verse 17. So verse 18 says, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. What does that mean? We're going to read about that, okay? What's up, Natalie? Welcome. Good to see you. Now, the works of the flesh are evident. So in order for us to understand the Holy Spirit, we have to understand his opposite, his enemy, right? The one who contradicts him, the one who doesn't think like him, which is the flesh. So let's just read a little bit about the flesh, not too much, okay? Now, the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy. This is a super long list. The flesh is powerful at darkness. 
envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you to, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So we see that the flesh, that walking in the flesh and doing the things that the flesh wants will lead us to not being allowed into the kingdom of God. Now, this is the book of Galatians after Jesus died, resurrected, after everything has happened. Paul is already preaching to the Gentiles. This is a message for us too in 2020. So it says that if we walk according to the flesh and do these things that are fleshly, not Holy Spirit, we will not be allowed in the kingdom of God. I think that's clear, but we're not, we're not here to talk about that right now. We're here to kind of, um, put the emphasis and the attention on who the Holy Spirit is so that we understand better when it's Him leading us and when it's not. Okay. So let's, let's continue reading. So those who do those things will not enter the kingdom of God, right? Verse 22. This is about the spirit now. Let's see the difference. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Remember that, that first one, love, right? Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This is what, this is what, what makes it such an enmity between the spirit and, and the flesh, right? It's, it's a very big difference. Self-control, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It says against such things, there is no law. So let's stop right there. When it named the, the works of the flesh, it says, if you do these things, you won't enter the kingdom of God. When it names the fruit of the spirit, it says against these, God finds no fault. There's nothing wrong against these. That's why it says if earlier we read in verse 17, or verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Why are you not under the law? Because now we can obey the word of God, right? And God will not judge us for obeying his word. That's actually a good thing. He'll reward us, right? That's why he allow, he'll allow us into his kingdom. So not under the law because we have the Spirit. Now that we have the Spirit, we must walk in the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit is that is what that looks like. If we read the list of the fruit of the Spirit, it sounds like a big um, opposite um, contrast, right? Antonyms of the things that were listed as the works of the flesh. You know, the the, the anger and the uh, sexual immorality and and, and and envy and drunkenness. You know, it, it's 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 the opposite. You know, when it names kindness and gentleness and patience and self control um, and love and all that is the opposite of the flesh. Okay, so it then says in verse twenty four, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Right. Remember, Jesus said, if you want to be the be my disciple, if you want to follow me, you have to deny yourself. That's your flesh. <laughs> deny yourself. Pick up your cross, meaning become a living sacrifice, like Paul says in Romans 12, 1, and follow me. Follow my teachings, my example, and everything that I command you to do. Right? So it says, if we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit meaning walk according to the spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envy one another. And, and you know, and it goes to talk about certain things um, about a spirit, the, the spirit of gentleness and things like that. So that's the Holy Spirit, guys. So so when, it, when the Bible says that we have been born again, um, when the Bible says that we are new creations, it says so because we have received the spirit of God. And it says that we have become one with the Lord in spirit. So he has entered us, right? He dwells within us and he's one with our human spirit. That makes us new creations because there has never existed a Nick Acosta with the Holy Spirit within. Nick Acosta with the human spirit existed before, but never a Nick Acosta one with the Holy Spirit. That's what makes me a child of God. Okay. That's a lot of that is Romans and first Corinthians, um, and, and, and some Galatians, but we're not going to get into that. That's more identity, right? Um, 
So the Holy Spirit, that's who we have. And those are the things he leads us to. And those are the things he doesn't lead us to. And it says when we walk according to him, we do have a reward. There is no law against us. But when we don't walk according to him, guess what? We won't enter the kingdom of God, meaning there is a law against that. Now, let's go to another scripture just to help these things make more sense to you. Okay. Does anybody have a question about that? Before we move any further, this tea looks hot. It looks hot. Every time I put my tea or my coffee in this, I forget how hot it keeps it. No questions? Okay. Well, let me let me put that. Israel says makes sense. Israel says makes sense. Okay, let me put that link that I mentioned earlier in case anybody wants to get involved with any of that. It might not even work right now since we're live, but I'm going to just put it there. Michelle said good stuff. Okay, all right, awesome. Awesome, Michelle. All right, let's go to... Hmm. <laughs> let's go to... Yeah, let's go to Romans. Let's go to Romans 13. Let's go to Romans 13. Okay. Now, a lot of us know Romans 13 as the chapter that talks um, about submitting to the authorities. And I'm sure a lot of people um, have looked at it in these last couple months, um, especially pastors, right? A lot of pastors have preached on this. Um, helping believers understand that we should um, follow um, that most of the time we should um, obey the the authorities, right? Uh, unless, you know, they're telling us to do something that goes against what the Lord told us to do, right? Um, but uh, yeah, Romans 13. And let's go to verse, verse number eight, okay? Romans 13, verse eight. All right, so it says, Romans 13, 8 says, Owe no one anything except to love each other. Stop. Do you guys remember what the first fruit of the Holy Spirit was in Galatians 5, 22? Love, right? So this is, this is the Holy Spirit. So it's telling us, again, walk in the Spirit, right? Walk in the Spirit. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. So it says, Oh, no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. Uh-oh. So here goes this word law again. This is, again, the book of Romans. This is, again, New Testament to New Covenant believers. Here's the word law again. Oh, no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. It says there is no law against that. Same thing that Galatians 5 was saying. If you bear the fruit of the spirit, there's no law against that. God will not put his wrath on you because of that. Because he actually has called you to do that. He's given you his spirit so that you can walk in the spirit. So it says if you love each other, you have no law against you. For the commandments you shall not commit adultery... You shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summoned, summed up, or, you know, uh, basically summarized, or joined, right? Or basically added up in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Why? Why? What, ha what does love have to do with fulfilling the, the laws of God, the commandments of the Lord Jesus to his disciples? It says, because love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. So if we go back to the works of the flesh, which, you know, I don't think we have to, but, you know, really quick, if, if you guys want me to, I can. If we go back to the works of the flesh, we're going to see that those works of the flesh included things that hurt people, that came against people, right? Sexual immorality, 
<laughs> right? I mean, that, that could go against, number one, the Bible says it goes against your own body. You're sinning against your own self. Number two, you could be sinning against your wife. You could be sinning um, against the person that you're involved with or whatever, or somebody else's husband, somebody else's wife, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, impurity, <laughs> that's that includes, you know, everything. Um, jealousy, you're sinning against somebody else. Coveting. When somebody sees somebody's car, somebody's wife, somebody's career, somebody's ministry, and you want it, and you like, hey, you know, you want it, you're like, man, I should have that, or I want that, I want that just because they got that. But the Lord never told you that he wants to give you that, or the Lord never even told you to, to pursue that. That's coveting, that's sin, that's against God's law, that's against God's command for us. And again, this is New Testament, this is Galatians, Romans, New Testament. Let's not pick and choose what we want to call New Testament or not, right? So... If we're walking in love, we're not going to do these things that I just named, right? The coveting, the, the jealousy. Uh, it's, it's talk, it talks about fighting, anger. It talks about, um, you know, sexual stuff, drunkenness, right? I'm not, I know that one doesn't really get mentioned much. Um, so when we're walking in love, we're going to do what God wants us to do because we're actually not going to do what God doesn't want us to do. <laughs> so it, it, it all, it's all connected. So why does he want us to walk in the spirit? Because if we walk in the spirit, we will bear the fruit of the spirit. One of them is love. And it says, if we walk in love, we're not going to do harm to a brother, to a neighbor. And if we're not doing nothing bad or wrong to a neighbor, then that means we're not going to do the works of the flesh, aka disobey God which is what God doesn't want us to do. So it's all connected. Love, the Holy Spirit, obedience to God, the, not doing the works of the flesh, not disobeying. All that is connected, okay? All that is saying the same thing. Just do what God says to do. And the reason you can do it and the, and the power that you have to be able to do it is the Spirit of God within. He's going to help you walk in love. That's why the Bible says put on love so many times, pursue love so many times, right? Um Love, if you're walking in love, you will fulfill the law. If you are doing wrong to a neighbor, you will not fulfill the law. And just like Galatians says, there is something against that. And, and it talks about not being able to enter the kingdom of God. That's scripture, right? We're not going to get into that, right? So, all right. So we have that, right? We also know that the spirit of God is the same spirit that Jesus prophesied that we were going to have, his very same spirit. He said, look, it's good for you that I go away so that the spirit could come and he's going to be with you and I'm never going to leave you or forsake you. He's going to teach you all things. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's going to comfort you. He's going to guide you whenever you need to speak boldly. He's actually going to fill your mouth with the words that you need to say at the time. Um, it says the spirit of your father will speak in you. Um, it says he will guide you into all truth, teach you all things. Later on, we see that it talks about the holy anointing that we've received and that we don't need that man teach us because the holy anointing can teach us, right? Is our teacher, right? So it's just a powerful thing when you think about us having the Holy Spirit. And when you think about the things that Jesus did, the way that Jesus lived, and when the scripture says that he cast out demons by the spirit of God, or that he walked out of the wilderness, having been tempted by the enemy and said no to the enemy plenty of times, being obedient to God, fulfilling righteousness. It says he walked out of that wilderness in the power of the spirit. There was no way for Jesus or any apostle or any person or you and I to overcome temptation or to say no to the devil or whatever sin, whatever is offered to us, whatever riches, whatever food, whatever title and position, whatever is offered to us of the world, we cannot overcome that or say no to it without the spirit, without the spirit. Okay. Now, that's the same spirit that we have. So that's why our identity changes, our potential and ability changes, and our mission changes. Amen. So let's see. Israel said, Prince Watson, what's up, cuz? Let's grow. 
Uh, it's even better to your advantage that I go so he can come. Uh, uh, what's up, Prince? Welcome, Prince. Uh, I guess you're, you're Israel's cousin, right? <laughs> I saw this on your page earlier. I'm listening. Good stuff, man. Awesome, awesome. All right, so now that we read that, guys, let's go to... Let me see. Let me see. Let's go to let's go to um First Corinthians twelve, and talk about that really quick. So a lot of people have the misunderstanding about the spirit. A lot of people have this misunderstanding about the spirit, right? They believe that the spirit comes and leaves, comes and leaves, right? Kind of like Old, Old Testament style, right? Um, or a lot of people have, have this misunderstanding that, that the Holy Spirit is only in them um, to get them to heaven one day. Uh, but they believe that people, Christians are still just fleshly, just we have nothing against this flesh. We have no way to combat this flesh, right? That's what, that's what a lot of a lot of people believe, right? So we're gonna talk about that because in, 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 if I go back to Galatians five, when we started reading Galatians five, it said, "Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh." So right here is telling us we have the spirit. Jesus told us we were going to have the spirit. First Corinthians tells us, Romans tells us we have the Holy Spirit. Okay. And in, in Galatians 5, 16 says, if you, if you are led by this Holy Spirit, if you do the things that this Holy Spirit wants you to do, you will not do the things that this flesh wants you to do. So the whole belief that we stand no chance against the flesh or the whole belief that, oh, we, we, we have no ability to overcome temptation. We have no ability to say no to porn or to say no to an affair or to say no to, to, to the love of money or to say no to getting drunk on, the, on Super Bowl night on Cinco de Mayo and New Year's Eve and all that, right? Th that's not scriptural. We see that we have the spirit. The spirit is the one that looks like the love and the joy and the peace and the self-control that we read about. And he's the one that in Galatians 5, 16 just said that if we walk according to him, we will be able to not gratify the works of the flesh. So we have to remember that they are opposites. The spirit and the flesh are opposite. So when you're walking in the things that the Bible calls flesh, you can't call that Holy Spirit. You can't call that you being spiritual. You can't call that I'm just following Jesus, bro. You, you can't call that. Following Jesus is following the Spirit. You know how Jesus said, follow me? Just like it says that Jesus said, follow me to be my disciple. It also says, be led by the Spirit. What do you, if you're being led by the Spirit, doesn't that mean you're following the Spirit? Isn't that the same term, right? If Jesus is supposed to lead you because you're supposed to follow Jesus and the Holy Spirit is supposed to lead you because you're supposed to be led by the Spirit, doesn't that mean that you also are following the Spirit because the Spirit is Jesus? The Spirit is the Father? The Bible says that the Spirit is the Spirit of the Father or that the Spirit is the Spirit of Christ or that the Spirit is the Spirit of the Lord, right? <laughs> so, you being led by the Spirit, you doing what the Spirit wants to do through you is you actually following Jesus and being obedient to Jesus. Against these things, there is no law. You don't run risk of danger, of, 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 of punishment or wrath, or wrath if you're living this way. We know if you're living the opposite, we just read in Galatians, you do run risk of danger, right? It's just, it's just, it, it's just what it is. It's black and white. You're not gonna play around with it. I ain't gonna beat about, around the bush. Um, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not preaching for, I'm not preaching, I'm preaching for people, but I'm not preaching by people, <laughs> you know, or according to people, you know, I'm preaching for people, 
to get to know the truth of God. I'm preaching for people to get the benefit of what Jesus came to give us. But I'm not preaching by your power or by your um, call. Like you didn't call me, right? God called me. So I'm, I'm preaching by his call for my life. And I'm preaching according to what his word says, according to, to his word, not, not, not people's, right? So I'm just going to keep it. I'm just going to keep it real, real transparent with you um, on every Facebook live or every Bible study we have, because otherwise, what are we doing here? What, what are we doing here? We ain't going to grow like that. <laughs> you know, you, you ain't going to grow like that. If I ask you to be my personal trainer, if I ask you to be my personal trainer so I can get back in shape and all you tell me is that, no, I don't have to lift weights. No, I don't have to do cardio. No, I don't have to eat healthy. And you keep telling me I'm in shape. You keep telling me all oh, you, th that ain't flabbiness, Nick. That ain't flabbiness. That ain't obesity, Nick. That's a six pack. If you keep telling me that's a six pack, it ain't going to turn it into a six pack. I need you to tell me what I need to do. I need you to tell me the truth so I can make the necessary changes and adjustments so I can reach my potential and my goal. Y'all understand that, right? So that's all we're doing when we read the Bible and talk about the truth of God. We need to get the truth because only the truth sets you free. Let's grow. Amen. Let's grow. Come on, guys. Let's grow. Let's grow. So 1 Corinthians 12. So this is also what the Holy Spirit is all about. This is what the Holy Spirit looks like. Let's talk about it. Why? Because he's inside of us. We must know what he has brought into our lives so we can live it. Amen. All right. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4, verse 4, verse 4. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all and everyone. Okay. So we know, you know, we, we know one God and he gives us one Spirit. Every Christian, every person who has believed in the gospel, who has believed in Jesus Christ, Right? Any Christian who has turned from their from their lifestyle, from their sin, and has chosen and decided by the conviction of the Lord within them to follow Jesus and start living like him, they receive the spirit of the living God. That's why, that's why it says that he is in us. That's why it says that our bodies are his temple. That's why it says that the spirit within us cries out, Abba, Father, right? Because we receive the spirit. And right here it says that it's the same spirit. So you ever get taught that somebody who, you know, somebody who, who speaks wisdom or somebody who walks in healing, somebody who sees miracles or somebody who's able to prophesy by the spirit of God. You ever, you ever hear the term, oh, that's the anointing of this or that's the anointing of that or that's the anointing of this minister. That's the anointing of that minister. Like all that is, 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 is like a lie. You know, I don't believe none of that. I don't believe there's special certain anointings and, you know, certain uh, spirits, the spirit of this, the spirit of that. I don't believe in that. I believe there's a Holy Spirit. I believe there's demonic spirits. And I believe that there's human spirits that are neither of those, but can get possessed with both of those. Y'all hear what I'm saying? <laughs> I believe there's... A one spirit of God, demonic spirits, and a human spirit. That's it. That's that's it. And the human spirit spirit can be possessed with either one of those. Okay. Now the whole possession thing, that's another topic. We're not getting into that. But we're gonna get into the fact that we are possessed with the Holy Spirit because that's what the New Testament teaches us. It doesn't teach us otherwise. <laughs> We are filled with the spirit of God. And right here, it says that there's not different spirits and different anointings. It says there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, right? So it's the same Holy Spirit manifesting through a different believer. The believer is different, but the spirit is the same. That's why it calls us, boom, one body, <laughs> Boom, one body. That's it. We're one church, one body, one bride, one flock of sheep. 
of Jesus. Okay? It's starting to make sense, right? We're all united, all together by the same spirit because we all have him. Okay? Cool? All right. That's why Jesus said, same works that I've done, you, my disciples, will be able to do. Not because we're going to be greater than him. Not because we're God too. We're not God. We're not saviors. We're not messiahs. We, we didn't come from heaven. He said we will be able to do the same works and even more because he was ready to send his own spirit to us. Amen? It's good news. It's powerful, guys. It's so powerful. So it says... To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Okay. So it says that the spirit, we have the spirit, right? And certain manifestations will take place, but they all come from the same spirit. Now let's stop right there because this isn't a gift of the spirit teaching. This is a Holy Spirit, you know, emphasis and, and, and highlight. Um, for, for tonight's Facebook Live, okay? Um, Israel said, hallelujah. Isaiah, Isaiah said, making sense. Okay, awesome. Awesome. Praise God. Praise God. Fearson said, dang, bro. That's good. I just got spiritual abs. Stop. Stop, man. We, nah, you didn't get spiritual abs, man. You didn't get no spiritual abs, Fearson. <laughs> Come on, that's funny. We are reflectors of the real light. Amen. That's right. Listen, it's so weird that Jesus was like, hey, I'm the light of the world. And then later on, he was like, you are the light of the world. <laughs> you know, it's the, oh, I thought you were the light of the world because you're the truth. I thought you were the light of the world because you're the way. I thought you were the light of the world because you are like the giver of life. I thought you were the light of the world because you are righteousness and you came to expose darkness and to deliver us from darkness. Why are you calling us us lights of the world? Oh, we're going to receive your spirit so we can actually follow you, right? When we hear of following Jesus, matter of fact, when we hear of somebody becoming a Christian or accepting Christ, it just sounds so weak compared to what it really is. It just sounds weak. Let's admit it. I'll admit it. You ain't got to admit it. I'll admit it for you. Christianity, when people say, hey, hey, brother Nick, I just received the Lord. Hey, brother Nick, I just became a Christian. Hey, brother Nick, I just joined the church. You know, it sounds kind of weak, not because of the words, because I know what they mean biblically, but it sounds weak because I've seen examples of that. And what that usually means is I'm in a tough phase of my life. I'm tired of, you know, all, you know, all my junk. I'm, I'm going to start going to church and I'm going to, you know, start listening to, to Hillsong or, you know, Jesus culture or Bethel or something like that. And, and I'm going to go to the most famous church of the city, because if that's where most people go to, then that's got to be the best church, right? <laughs> you know, and we, we make up little stuff like that. And, and, you know, a lot of people don't really follow Jesus. They just do churchy things, right? They they accept Jesus into their lives, right? But it's so much more powerful than that. When you become a Christian, and the term Christian is correct because that's in the Bible, that's in the book of Acts, the apostles were being called Christians. So, you know, I'm not knocking the term, that's biblical. When you become a Christian, y'all, you become a son of God. You become a daughter of God. You're like, oh, Nick, but we were already children of God. No, no, we were not. You were enemies of God. You were children of the devil. You were mere flesh. You were copies of the fallen nature of Adam. You were nothing of Christ. Amen? I was nothing of Christ. That's why I hate my old life. That's why I hate everything I did. I'm ashamed of that, right? If I wasn't ashamed of that, I would have never repented. <laughs> I would have never said yes to Jesus. I, I would have never said, Lord, save me from this junk that I created because of my sinfulness. Fill me with your spirit so I can live holy. <laughs> you know? So, no, we were not all children of God. Galatians says, you, when he's, when he's writing, he's writing to a church. That means a body of believers like you and I. It says, for you are sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. That means we can only become sons of God by believing in Christ because we can only be forgiven of sins by believing of Christ and we can only receive the Holy Spirit once we've forgiven our sins by, for, by believing in Christ. So it's like a domino effect. You believe in the gospel 
You get forgiveness of your sins. You receive the Holy Spirit. Boom. You're a son of God. You've been born again. Now, the spirit that 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 the that the father sent you came within you and now you've been born again born of above that's what the bible says you've been born of the spirit that's the will of god amen it's powerful uh israel said i think we miss the importance and the reason of being made new so often yeah definitely definitely we, we definitely do we definitely do i think i think we so many times we believe christianity is it's like it's like going to like a Home Depot workshop. From now on, I, I'm going to be a carpenter. You know, <laughs> from now on, I'm going to be a gardener. And, and we think it's just like a change of profession or something like that. It's a change of hobby or something like that. Like going to church is, is, is a hobby to a lot of people, but it's not, a, you know, Christianity is not a lifestyle to a lot of people. Becoming a, a Christian, becoming a child of God is you becoming somebody different, somebody new because you receive the spirit of your creator. It's powerful, right? So that's who we have within us. That's why it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ, not outside of Christ, there's a difference. The Bible always makes a distinction. You either believe or you don't. You're following Jesus or you don't. You've been born again or you don't. You're righteous or you're not righteous. <laughs> you know, I just made a video on YouTube. I just created a video on YouTube a couple days ago um, that, you know, it's, 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 it's very biblical from my end, you know, and I, I hit up on a lot of scriptures to help people understand what righteousness really is and, 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 and what, you know, what, what you're supposed to do if you stumble, if you sin and what you're not supposed to do because it's not biblical. So go watch that video. Um, you know, um, two days ago I posted it. It's, 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 it's very good. It's like 47 minutes long. It's a whole teaching. Um, but it's going to help you grow. It's going to help you understand, um, a lot of incorrect teachings and indoctrines that are out there that are only going to hinder people from actually pleasing God and actually entering the kingdom of God. Amen. So check that out on the YouTube. I'm going to put the link to everything here again. Just so you guys have access to that throughout the video, if you want to go to it or whatever. But anyway, it's so important that we understand the difference between righteousness and unrighteousness, son of God and enemy of God, light and darkness. We've been born again. The Bible says that we've been taken, translated, transferred, transported, taken away from the kingdom and the powers of darkness and have been placed and put in the kingdom of the son of God. The kingdom of the son of his love. That's Jesus' kingdom. Amen. That's powerful, y'all. It's so powerful. So let's continue reading. Okay. So it's going to say that we've received the same spirit. Okay. Cool. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 12. But check this out. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Right? 13. Uh-oh, Samantha said it's not clickable. Okay. Um, that's fine. I'll, I'll put it after the live. No worries. It'll be clickable after the live. We have been reborn. That's right, Isaiah. Yeah, definitely. So this chapter, everybody knows, especially on Valentine's Day. We talk about love all the time, right? Um, or especially when we see people walking in the power of God and we're mad that we haven't desired spiritual gifts. And when we pray for people, nobody got healed. So we start kind of not believing the gifts of the spirit. So we just emphasize this chapter 13 here, right? Just to kind of appease our conviction and kind of see our conscience about God telling us to desire spiritual gifts and walk in the same ministry Jesus walked in, which is miraculous, right? But that's another subject. That's another topic. Um, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am noisy. I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. So this is Paul writing again to a church, um, a Christian church, um, way after Jesus resurrected, right? Because Paul was around. And guess what? He wasn't writing to apostles. So if he's writing to people, teaching them just because you're walking in the supernatural power of the spirit, I think it's unlikely that he believed that the supernatural power of the spirit was going to go away with his death. <laughs> you know, if I'm telling people, hey, just because you're driving doesn't mean that you shouldn't walk sometimes. 
if I'm driving somebody that it, it basically means that they're, they're supposed to be driving, like they're going to be driving, they're going to have the ability to drive, right? So that's, <laughs> that's what we got to look at here too. If he's telling us just because you speak in tongues, prophesying work miracles doesn't mean that means we're supposed to prophesy what, you know, see miracles and, and, and speak in tongues and all that stuff. You know, he's telling us what to watch out for because it's expected of us because we have the ability to do it. Why? Let's go back to what we're talking about. The same spirit as Paul had, the Holy Spirit, not an anointing, not a, not a gift, the spirit who gives the gift and who is the anointing. Okay. So we have the same spirit. So he's saying, look, speak in tongues, you know, prophesy, have a whole bunch of faith, whole bunch of knowledge, whole bunch of wisdom. But if you don't have love, it's nothing. Why? Same thing we just read in Galatians 5. If you're not walking in love, you're not fulfilling the word of God, the law of God. You're not keeping Jesus' teachings and commandments. And that means that there is a law against that. So why is it good if you're walking in the power of the spirit so, uh, in, uh, in the power factor, but not in the power of the spirit in the fruit factor, meaning in obedience to God's word. Because Jesus said, many will come to me in the last days saying, Lord, Lord, I prophesied, I worked miracles and I did amazing things in your name. He's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. This is the emphasis. You doer of iniquity. See, everybody stops and I never knew you. And everybody's like, oh, just spend, spend time with Jesus. Spend time in his presence, soak in his presence. And, and they emphasize that, right? You know, everybody always wants to emphasize the supernatural or the, or, or the lovey, love, lovey dovey feeling of God's presence. Everybody always wants to emphasize, you know, just, just, oh, just you and God. He loves you. But they don't have to stop there if they mean good. When we mean good, we're going to read the whole scripture and not stop. The whole scripture says, I never knew you. You do work of iniquity. You worker of iniquity, right? You worker of unrighteousness. That's what Jesus said that he was going to say to people when they call him Lord and when they try to gain his favor because they were, they walked in, in, in the, in the, in the gifts of the spirit. He's going to say, I don't care what you walked in. You disobeyed me. <laughs> you know, you disobeyed me. Um, uh oh, where's my charger? Hey baby, can you give me my charger? I started a Facebook live with a low battery again. I'm sorry, baby. Let me get that charger, that, that short one. It's on my on nightstand. So it says, if you're doing all these supernatural things, but you're not loving, Jesus doesn't care about that. You're not going to enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because if you're not loving, you're not fulfilling the word of God. And if you're not fulfilling the word of God, it's not righteousness. And if it's not righteousness, it's not holy conduct. And the Bible says, without holiness, you shall not see the Lord. And the Bible says, faith without works is dead. And if we're justified by faith, but faith without works is dead, then we can't be justified. It's in the night table, the, 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 the short the phone one. Charger. The, yeah, the phone charger. <laughs> so that's crazy. That's crazy. If you're doing these things but don't have love, it means nothing. It means nothing. It's not impressive. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. Okay. It's not impressive. You know what I'm saying? So it, it all it's saying is the same thing. Look, y'all want to do ministry? Y'all want to get on Facebook Live like Nick Acosta? And y'all want to, you know, have a YouTube channel? And y'all want to have these meetings and these Bible studies? And y'all want to go evangelize? And y'all want to go do jail ministry? And y'all want to, you know pastor and do all this stuff but if you're not doing what the one you call the lord is telling you to do what's the point of that all if you're not even going to end up in the kingdom in eternity with him anyway you're missing the point you know that's what jesus emphasized so strongly do you guys see what i'm saying like this is bible y'all this is the bible this is scary it's scary now that i put it this way right but if we shift it and go back to the beginning of the Facebook Live, it's an enabling, powerful truth to know that the same spirit that was in the apostles, the same spirit that is in the believer that you're impressed with. There's a Christian, there's a teacher, there's a pastor, there's an evangelist that you're impressed by. There's somebody you're impressed by because of their good fruit or because of their ministry or because of their love for Jesus. There's somebody you're impressed by because of the miracles they see. And I just want to remind you tonight that the same spirit they have is the same spirit you have. 
So why are you so shy? Why are you so hesitant of living for God and keeping his word and letting go of the old you, letting go of that limit that the flesh puts on you. You're not mere flesh anymore. You have the same spirit of whatever Christian is impressing you on TV or in your church or, or, or whatever. If you're not impressed by any Christian today, then if you're impressed by Paul and Peter and James and John and Stephen and Philip and Nathaniel and, 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 and Thomas and, 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 and all of them and Andrew, if you're impressed by them, guess what? They were with Jesus the spirit of Jesus is in you. They heard the teachings of Jesus. The teachings of Jesus are in front of you, under your nose. <laughs> they got filled with the spirit of Jesus. You are filled with the spirit of Jesus. Why are we so negative about our potential, about our ability? I'm just human. So were they, but they had the creator spirit inside of them. They had the spirit of the living God, like the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Moses, who parted the Red Sea, who got Sarah pregnant at her old age, who filled the Virgin Mary with himself, a virgin who never had relations. This is God. That's the, that's the same spirit who's within us. We have to start believing in the new ability we have through our new identity, through our new, come on, like, I just accepted Jesus in my heart. I'm going to start going to church. I'm going to start calling myself a Christian. That ain't it. It's more powerful than that, man. You want to be born again because your life sucks and because you are convicted of your sins and because you believe you will go to hell because of God's order for you to go to hell because you sinned against him. And now you want to be born again, become his son, have peace with God and receive his spirit so that you can obey him for the rest of your life until he comes and judges everybody. And because you've obeyed him, you will enter the kingdom of God. That's Christianity. That's why you want to believe in the gospel. That's why you want to follow Jesus. He has the words of life. Amen. Come on, guys. It's powerful. Somebody said, love is obedient. Israel said, love is obedient. Come on. Come on. Je this is what Jesus said. Y'all want to know what Jesus said? Because a lot of times we think this is what Jesus said. I condemn you no more. Where's your accusers? Oh, they dropped their stones and they left? I condemn you no more. Have a good day. That, that's that's Some of us, that's all we know about Jesus. We don't read the Bible. We just watch YouTube preachers and TBN preachers. We don't read the Bible. But Jesus also said, why do y'all call me Lord and not do what I say? That's common sense. If you call somebody your supervisor, if you call somebody your boss, if you call somebody your ruler, if you call somebody your president, your emperor, your Lord, your king, you better obey them. And, that, and Jesus said, he said, why y'all calling me Lord? Y'all don't do what I say. That's weird. That's weird. <laughs> Come on. God said, don't let your yes and your no be lies. He said, let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. So if we, we say, Lord, I want to follow you. Let us mean it. That's why it says to be born again, to follow Jesus, you got to count the cost. If you're a king, if you're a ruler and you want to go to war with another nation, you better count how many soldiers they got. You better fit, find out how much money they got to go to war. Because it costs money to go to war and it costs soldiers and people to go to war and it costs weapons to go to war. war. So you better do some research and find out the cost of going to war with that king, with that nation. <laughs> That's what the Bible says. So if you want to, if you want to start serving God and follow Jesus, you better do some research and find out what it's going to cost you. Because Jesus said, if anyone wants to be my disciple, he needs to deny himself 100%. That's it. Next. If anybody wants to be born again, he must eat my flesh and my blood. That's it. Next. <laughs> and people started leaving. People start, oh, no, nah, I don't want to follow him. That's crazy. He's talking like he's God. He is. <laughs> he is. Amen. So we have to count the cost, not just the blessings. See, a lot of people, a lot of people think, a lot of pe people think that being born again is, oh, 
I want to be rich like the preacher. Oh, I want to have the Bentley like the preacher. Oh, it's like, no, you're looking at the opposite example you're supposed to be looking at. Amen. Counting the call, the cost of following Jesus is asking yourself, do I really want to let go of everything I ever wanted? Everything that was my dream, that was my goal. Do I really want to let go of every sin I've ever loved? Do I really, do I really want to let go of porn and, and fornication and being promiscuous and going to the bar and the club and meeting new people and having sex with them and getting drunk and getting high with them? Do I really want to let go of that? Do I really want to let go of arguing with people and talking trash about people? Do I really want to let go of stealing and lying and manipulating? Do I really want to let go of that? That's that's counting the cause. And what we're that's why it says if anyone must if, if anyone was to be my disciple, they must hate their life. <laughs> and it even says they must even hate their family. They, they, they must hate everything about their old self. That's that's being born again. Because once we receive the Holy Spirit, we read it in the beginning of this message. He is the opposite of the flesh. He is contrary to the flesh. He's going to lead you to do things that the flesh doesn't want you to do. And the flesh is going to lead you to do things that God doesn't want you to do. So to count the cost is you asking yourself, wow, am I ready to be born again? Receive the spirit of God and live holy because the spirit of God is called the Holy Spirit, not the fleshly spirit. There's no such thing unless you're talking about a demon because <laughs> a demon is the only spirit that is going to lead you to want to do sinful things, fleshly things, <laughs> because the devil basically created the, the distortion and the sinfulness of, of this fallen flesh, right? It came from him in the beginning in Genesis, right? So if you count the cost of really following Jesus, you're going to think about the things you have to leave behind in order for you to make it where he promises you will make it if you follow him. The Bible says, if you endure, you will receive the crown of life. If is a powerful word. If you continue in the faith, you. if is a powerful word. If you keep my commandments, if is a powerful word. If anyone wants to follow me, they must. If and they must are powerful words. <laughs> that's crazy real Christianity, guys. And uh, we must know what that's about. Amen. What's up, Roshni? Good to see you on here. That's right, um, Fearson. That's right, bro. We must know what real Christianity is about. And we will never know what real Christianity is about if we're not looking at the teachings of Jesus and if we're not seeing who the Holy Spirit is in us because he's in us for us to live a certain way. It says be led by the Spirit. Amen? Be led by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit led to heaven. <laughs> no, be led by the spirit to not gratify the desires of the flesh. Be led by the spirit in order to not live like the old Jew, because if you live like the old Jew, Galatians 5, in regards to the works of the flesh, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's Bible. Amen. Hola, ma. Amen. So let's just, let's think on that. I'm going to leave y'all with that, okay? Let's think on that. If this helped you, if this blessed you, please like this video. Please share this video. Whoever is your friend on Facebook is probably not my friend, so they will never see this unless you share it. So go ahead and share this, all right? What's up, Michael? Good to see you on here, Michael. Bless you, man. Let's grow. If you're watching me, let's grow. Like, just like the shirt says, let's grow in Christ. Then, listen. Facebook, Facebook is a waste of time. Instagram is a waste of time. YouTube is a waste of time. Everything is a Zoom meetings. All that's a waste of time unless we are growing in Christ together because that's what we're called to do. We can't bear different fruit if we're not growing and changing and being transformed and learning new things and applying new things. Amen. So grow with me. I'm glad you guys are watching. I'm glad y'all are watching. Thank you, uh, Natalie. Thank you for sharing. Um, I'm going to put in the link 
um, in the comments. If you guys want to join our Bible studies, our, our, our free online live Bible studies every Tuesday night and Thursday night, I'll put the link so you can sign up. You'll get an email, an email with all the information and you'll get reminder emails about it and you'll get emails about what text we're going to read and stuff like that. Okay. So you can be prepared when you join. Um, man, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. You know, this, this, this is good. This is good. All right. I love you guys. Do you guys have any questions, any comments, any concerns before I end this video? I'm going to go spend some time with my wife. I don't know what we're about to do. Um, Y'all good? No questions, no comments, no concerns? Okay. All right. I love y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a good night, man. Bless you guys. Take care. Hey, that's our mission, to walk according to the Spirit. That's the new us, the ones with the spirit. So our new mission, our new purpose is to walk in the spirit, to be led by the spirit. Amen. That's the only way we can live like Christ. That's the only way we can do what Christ says to do. That's the only way we can stop doing what we used to do by the spirit, because he's the opposite of the flesh that led us to do the things we used to do. Amen.